Hello and welcome to this online masterclass. I'm super excited to see already so many people here in the waiting room. This is really, really exciting. I first of all want to thank you all for all the suggestions of topics for me to discuss. I was completely overwhelmed with how many I received and therefore I had to, you know, make room for a couple masterclasses. So we'll do one today and we'll do one next week and I try to cover all the topics that you suggested and all the questions I try to answer. First of all, I want to thank my patrons. They make this event possible. They support me. So if you also want to support me, become part of the Patreon program down below in the description. There's a link to the Patreon program. I upload new videos every month where you can play with me. I talk about the standard literature. And again, as I just said, you make these events possible. So I really, really appreciate all my patrons for supporting me. All right, let's jump right into it. Uh, the question that I, that I received a lot is, how should we go about posture? What's a good posture? And I think the first thing to, to think about when it comes to, to, to posture is try to go away first when you think about it from the instrument uh, and try to just, you know, in regular life, work on your posture. Uh, it's something that we get yelled at already early on in life, uh, in kindergarten, elementary school, teachers tell us, sit up straight. And as soon as that happens, it, I got yelled at often pretty. And if, as soon as that happens, you kind of tighten up and you use your muscles and everything is not relaxed anymore. So, you know, you don't go to a healthy, healthy posture. So what I try to always think is I try to have my, my body uh, as relaxed as possible, kind of like bouncing on here. There's a little cord that is um, holding me up. I try to relax my shoulders, but not too soggy. Um, I notice when I play, especially when you go in the upper register, my legs and my knees get really tight occasionally. So try to from, you know, from downwards, try to be as relaxed as possible. Um, yeah, try not to use muscle, no tension. The looser your body is, the more comfortable you, you will actually feel. Uh, I have noticed over the years of me, you know, looking at videos of me playing and pictures of me playing, that I was, I was pointing down uh, early on with my bell towards the floor rather than projecting out my sound. It was always, you know, since I'm tall, it was always kind of a little bit tilted down and uh, then only offered my, my, my sound to the floor. So nowadays I always try to think about, you know, projecting out my sound to the audience, playing for the audience, not playing for the floor. So try to think about that. When you pick up the instrument, try to bring the instrument to your mouth and not go there with your neck. That's, that's happening often and then there's a lot of tension here. Try to just bring up the instrument to your mouth. I hope that helps you with posture. Try to go with the most relaxed feeling with no tension as possible. Uh, over there, there is the chat. Please write in there where you're watching from. I'm always curious to see where my fans are watching from. It's super exciting. And also, if you have any, if you have any questions or comments or something is not clear, just put it in the chat. I'll, oh, Belgium, nice. The crossbones are watching. Texas, so cool. Nice, all over the world. Cool. If you have any, Norway, North Carolina, cool. San Diego, Canada. Wow, this is cool. I'm super excited. Um, I won't read them all out loud now. Austria, nice, home. Um, so if you have any questions or feedback or something that is unclear, please just write it in the comments. I'll get back to you afterwards. I can't really type right now. I'll, I'll focus on the speaking part. That's already nerve wracking enough. Um, cool, that's the posture part. Let's go to breathing. That's a question that I received really often. Italy, I have to read that out loud. That's where I'm from, so I'm really honored that you're watching. Thank you very much. Breathing, let's go to that. Um, I think that's a big topic in the brass world. New Zealand, wow, sorry, I keep shouting them out because it's so amazing. That's why I wanted you to write it in, so cool, Argentina. Uh, I think it's a topic that we talk way too much in the brass world. It's completely, we, we think too much about it, I think. Keep in mind, the first thing that you did when you came to this world is take a deep breath. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here right now watching this. So you're a good breather. That's something to, that you should know about and should always think about that when you think that you're having a breathing issue. Uh, you're a good breather. Otherwise, you wouldn't survive. So 
I think the problem that we have is when we then go, you know, from breathing like in regular life, when we walk around, then when we, we pick up the instrument, then, you know, we get into a kind of troubled world, we overthink it. So for breathing, I think always about the concept of, you know, keeping the shoulders down, uh, not really inhaling into your shoulders. I see that often that people inhale up here, then there's tension again. And your bottom part of your lungs is empty when you just inhale into here. So I always think about filling up my lungs from the bottom to the top. I always use this analogy of filling up a glass with water and the glass fills from the bottom to the top. So think the same way when you inhale, take a deep breath, start low and then fill up gradually up high. Um, sometimes I see people, you know, having some tensions here. They do, they, they do some, some sort of tension. There's some noise happening. You know, as soon as that happens, there's tension and then you can't really breathe as relaxed as possible. So try to make it as calm as possible, like just in regular life. Um, also, when you do this, try to think about, you know, just don't overthink it and think about, okay, I'm just, you know, here right now, I'm holding my phone in my hand, I'm waiting for the bus and that's the inhale that you should take when you play. Super relaxed, as calm as possible. Uh, there's a couple of breathing exercises that I do and you can find them in my warm-up uh, now during COVID. I finally had the time to write down my warm-up. It's nothing special. It's just what I do every day. It's uh, influenced and inspired by all my mentors. Again, nothing special, but it's what I do every day. You can find the exercises there, what I do for breathing. Uh, down below, there's my website. You can purchase it from there. It's Black Friday, so hopefully many of you will buy it. Um, Cool. I think that should that should be it for breathing. Take it easy. Don't don't overthink it. Just take a nice and calming and relaxed breath. Also, don't try to do any extra motion. Sometimes I see players do this kind of thing. You know, you just have the capacity that you have. If you move your body in some sort of direction, it's not going to make your lungs bigger. So just try to make it as calm as possible. Now, let's go to the concept of air. People ask me what I think about while I play. And my answer is, I always think about the air. I always think about the air as a train that just keeps moving forward. From note to note, it's just pushing smoothly through. I try not to have air bumps from note to note. Um, no matter what kind of articulation I'm using, whatever, if I'm playing slow or fast, I always think about this train moving forward. And if this train starts to stop and you stop your air from note to note, then there's a problem with the, with the train because there's going to be a delay. And you don't want to piece people off because that's what happens when there's a delay. So just try to keep the train running as smoothly as possible. to keep it moving straight forward no air bumps in between this was something slow if I play something quicker all I'm thinking is just keep the air going smoothly forward good that's something to think about while you play the air will do the job try to to start trusting your air the air will do the job Cool. Another question I received often is, how should we organize practicing? Especially when you're a student, you have you know, many classes to attend to, and it's hard to, to kind of figure out, navigate through that and figure out how to structure, structure the practicing. What is really important for me is I always have small practice sessions. I don't practice for a longer period of time. Um, and this is because one day I read a study that the human brain can only function on a high level for about 25 to 30 minutes. That's, that's pretty, pretty low, actually. It's not a long time to be focused. Uh, everything after that is not really high quality for your brain anymore. Yes, you will probably work on your lips and endurance, but it's not going to be quality work with your brain anymore. So I try to practice for 30 minutes at a time at that point, 
30 minutes is just really short. It takes me about three minutes to get going, to get in there. And then you just have a couple more minutes to, to get everything done. So I try to max that out to about 45 minutes. My practice sessions are always 45 minutes long. I switch on a timer so I don't go over or I don't go too short. And what is really important for me is I try to always be really goal-oriented when I practice. Really structured and really intense. I try to fix things and I try to, you know, make things happen during that practice session. So I try not to waste any time. So the phone is on silent, there is no Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever. There's none of that kind. The phone is on silent, there's no calls, there's no texting. Uh, I try to not be distracted when I practice. All I try to is focus on the task, what I try to achieve. So the first session every day I try to get done, I try to get pretty much everything done as soon as possible in the day. That way I can just, you know, you know, later in the day focus on pieces, focus on excerpts, focus on whatever I need to. So I start the day early. I start with, with my warm up, as I said, uh, it's about 45 minutes long. And as you, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you see that I start at 7 a.m. pretty much every day. That way by 8 a.m. I'm ready to go. And that's a great feeling. If I would start at 3 p.m., then there's just not so many more hours to, to get everything that, that, done that I want to get done. So then the second practice session normally for me is an Arban session. Um, that's my go-to book for pretty much everything technical, articulations, dynamics, uh, interval studies, double tongue, triple tongue, etc. So many great aspects in that you know brass Bible. So I try to always do two or three exercises out of each important chapter to me. As a brass, as a trombonist particularly. Um, since it is meant for, for trumpet, there's a, there's a couple, couple paragraphs in there that are not so much needed in our playing, so I try to really focus on the important fundamental aspects. Then my third practice session is always a Bordoni session, lyrical playing. I really love doing that. Um, normally I just play one Bordoni in those 45 minutes, but in all sorts of different crazy ways. Singing with the lead pipe, with the mouthpiece, uh, regular key, down an octave, up an octave, tenor clef, alto clef, etc. Just go crazy with it. Uh, but it really will bring the lyricism out of your playing. Um, many people have asked me about high playing and endurance. That's where I would start with the Bordonis. Take them in tenor clef and alto clef. Work on your high register with singing qualities. That's so important when you approach the high register. Um, I always try to have at least 50 minutes break in between uh, these practice sessions. Ideally, it would be 45 minutes playing, 45 minutes rest, etc. So as a student, I would fit these little practice sessions in between classes, 7 to 8 a.m., 7 to 7.45, warm up, then go to class, then the next uh, session, etc. So I always try to fit these little sessions in between rehearsals, etc. Then my fourth session, would be again an Arban session. There's so much to cover from the book, so many different techniques that we need in our playing. The fourth session normally is more double tonguing, triple tonguing, some interval studies, etc. Then the fifth session, if I, if, if, I, if I feel motivated to do more fundamentals, uh, I would go do a scale session where I just go crazy with scales. And then uh, usually I add some lip slurs by Brad Edwards in there or some Schlossberg slurs. Uh, as you can see, most of my practicing is really fundamental oriented. I'm a strong believer in that if you're rock solid in your fundamentals, you're going to have an easier time on the pieces. I don't really like to fix issues on the pieces themselves. And then for the rest of the sessions, I would focus on whatever is on the stand. If you're a student, you probably have to learn excerpts, uh, pieces for the orchestra, pieces for your teacher, uh, for your recital, for a wind band, for trombone choir, etc. So the rest of the sessions focus on actual music itself. But still, you know, 60, probably 60 to 65% of my practicing is fundamental oriented. And then really important at the end of the day, a cooling down session, Bordoni down an octave, slurs in the pedal register, long tones, Really, lip yoga. Uh, try to treat your lips as nicely as possible because then the next day they have to function again. Um, one aspect about practicing, and people seem kind of shocked when I tell them how much I practice in the brass world, I, I pretty much usually go up to seven hours every day. 
sometimes it's five, six, sometimes it's eight. Um, and people are shocked about that. And I think uh, our generation, the young generation kind of, uh, we have to do that because there's just too many good players out there uh, to keep up with. Um, so I'm really, you know, I practice a lot, but I also advocate for practicing a lot. I know there's, you know, rock stars in the brass world that say, don't practice more than two hours, uh, and they don't practice more than two hours. But you have to notice, they are established stars. They are, you know, they, they, they have a career. Uh, if you want to become good at what you're doing right now, you need to invest time. And I think the brass world has to catch up to, or we are slowly catching up to the string players and uh, the pianists. They practice so much because there's so many good ones. So it's really competitive. And I think the brass world is catching up to there. Um, there's many players that are practicing a lot. My role model was always Mr. Lessie that I studied with. He always practices so much, so many hours, six, seven hours every day. And my thought as a student was, well, if he's practicing that much, I should probably practice doubly as much um, of him because that's the only way for me to ever catch up. So try to be goal oriented when it comes to practicing, but also practice wisely. Don't kill your lips. Always try to treat them as nicely as possible. Next question that come up quite often is the practice mute. What kind of practice mutes I use and how I go about, you know, practicing with the practice mute. And actually a couple, couple of weeks ago, my, my neighbors, now that we are all in home office, they kind of, they weren't so happy about me practicing every day for seven hours uh, that they complained and they, you know, I was forced to play with the practice mute for about two weeks. And I was kind of scared a little bit about that. And, uh, but then I figured, you know, just be wise about it. Uh, play things, play in a comfortable dynamic, piano to mezzo forte. Don't play anything louder. That's going to destroy your lips on the practice mute. Um, do things that really work well that you can figure out on the practice mute. Playing repertoire with the practice mute is not the smartest thing and it's not really beneficial. Playing something really musical or really lyrical or focusing on your sound does also not work. Focus on technical things. Uh, tonguing is really good. Articulation is good. Slurs really work well. I have three go-to practice mute. The first one is the Okura mute from Japan. Then there's the Best Brass, as you can see, it's fallen down quite often. It's toured with me around the world. This used to be my go-to practice mute. And now I have this new mute by David Rechano, which is my new favorite practice mute. I'll play them all for you so you can get a little, little insight on them. This one, the Kura mute, feels the hardest for me to play. There's a lot of resistance. It's a little hard to, to find the pitch center for me. As you can see, I'm having a little hard time, you know, finding the pitch center, especially the lower I go, it's really, really hard. Then my best brass is a little bit louder than the Okura. But as you can see again, low register is really, really hard. If I go up higher, it's easier. Works pretty well up there. But the most comfortable one and the one that feels closest to just playing the regular horn is the David Rechano mute. Uh, go check it out, David Rechano mutes. Feels really comfortable on the instrument, just feels like the regular trombone. Feels super easy. So definitely check out this mute here. I think it also comes in different colors. All right, I think we have already come to the last question that I'll cover today. Uh, we're running out of time here. And again, as I said, there will be another session, another live session next week. So make sure again to tune in, um, tune in there and I'll answer more questions there. Um, also try to hit the bell below, uh, subscribe. So that way you also get informed when I upload new videos and I go live. I really would appreciate that. And again, check out the Patreon program. It's a really cool program. The last question is also a big topic. It's about handling nerves. How do I do that? And how do I deal with my nerves? What is really important when it comes to nerves is, first of all, try to just realize that it's completely normal to be nervous. 
everybody's nervous, every professional is nervous, we all get nervous, it's just really, it's human, it's a good thing, so try to embrace that fact, it's good to know that everybody's nervous, trust me, I'm really nervous right now, I'm talking to a lot of people that are online around the world, I'm talking in a foreign language, that makes me nervous, I can screw up really easily right now, that makes me really nervous, um, so it's just really normal, it's human, otherwise you would be a robot and you wouldn't care, so it's totally fine, so try to just embrace that fact. Then there's a couple couple little things that, that will help you. The first one is breathe, breathe, breathe. It's, you know, when you go on stage, you got, you will have this heartbeat going and it's hard to get that calmed down a little bit. And the first thing that goes out the window when we go on stage is normally breathing. We completely forget about it because we are so in shock a little bit. Um, so try to, when I walk out on stage, I try to take really deep breaths and before I play my first note I take one inhale through my nose that really helps me to just calm down and then I go for it so when you play with music in front of you or sheet music right on top of that breathe 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 or put in air um, write things help yourself out because it will remind you because you will forget so try to help yourself out a little bit with that secondly what really helps is practice. That's just really the only thing that will help you overcome nerves. Um, there's two different ways of practicing to me. There is practicing, it's like a workshop, you're figuring things out, and then there's practicing performing. You need to make sure that you do that. Don't just practice in the workshop, you need to practice performing. Play for your teacher, play for your family, play for your colleagues, play for your classmates. Uh, record yourself. Every time the camera is on, I'm just so much more nervous than if the camera wouldn't be on. So try to simulate the stress situation. It's something that's really helpful and it will help you in an audition or a competition preparation. Um, play for your classmates. I think for me at Juliet that was the worst, playing for my classmates, because that's when I wanted to sound the best. Uh, play for your enemies, because again, there you want to sound the best. You won't, don't want to suck at that point. So try to really simulate that stress situation. So practice, practice, practice. Um, that's pretty much it about the nerves, you know. Acknowledge the fact that it's just normal and practice. I think that will really help you in the long run. And then also, you know, do the pre prepared for like 60% of your ability. You don't know all the notes yet and you're, you're just not sure about what you're doing. Of course, then when you get nervous, we take about 10 or 15% away from your ability, then you go down to 45% of what you can do. Of course, you're going to be nervous. I would be nervous if I don't know the music that I have to perform. But, you know, if you're 90% prepared, 100 is always a little bit, you know, not really reachable. But if, you, if you're 90% prepared and we take 10% away of your ability, then you're still at 80%. You can still go out there and show what you've got. So practice and prepare for it. Really structure your practicing before something big happening. Uh, and then also, just know the fact that you're going out there, you've done your pre-work, and that's just a moment to do it, to shine. Don't hold back. Just show them what you've got. It's the same as if you walk on the street. You know, it's either, you know, you walk out there and people are going to look like how you look like, or they are not. You just can't do anything about it, pretty much. It's the same when you go on stage. People are going to love it or they're going to hate it. Just go for it. People are more likely not to like it if you're not going for it. So try to really just go out there, enjoy yourself and go for it. All right, I think this is it for today. Again, next week there will be another session. If there's questions, I'll try to answer them immediately now afterwards. I'll write in the comments, I'll answer them. Uh, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook if you have anything that you want to know. And again, thank you so much to the Patreons for supporting me, for making this possible. I really hope you enjoyed this. And again, thank you very much for being here. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.